Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and in this video I'm going to build this N-Gage Great Western six-wheel towed brake van kit from Osborne's. Obviously the box isn't much to look at, but we didn't buy it for the box, did we? Inside we find stuff. I'm not going to do the whole what's in the box thing here, because I didn't really feel a need. Most of the kit is laser cut wood, which I was a little bit surprised by. I've never built one of these kits before, so I didn't quite know what to expect. There's a little baggie with plastic wheels, coupling pockets and couplings, and some very nice turned brass buffers. The instructions are pretty simple, it's just this little sheet. There isn't much by way of diagrams, but the descriptions are pretty decent. Would I like something a bit more detailed with more diagrams? Well, yes. But this is sufficient, and I would imagine very cost effective. Instead of plastic cement for this kit because, well, it's made of wood, I'm going to use wood glue. This glue should work well enough for the plastic and brass in this kit too. We start with this frame part, and it has a top and a bottom. The top is marked as top, and the bottom isn't marked, but you know that it's the bottom because it doesn't have top written on it. Some of the more astute amongst you may notice that I seem to have completely disregarded this. I don't think it really matters that much. I take the brake shoe part off the sprue. Is it a sprue when it's laser cut wood? Anyway, it's not too hard to remove most of the parts. They've been lasered pretty good. You may have to press some of them a bit, and if so, I would suggest being careful. I apply glue to the brake thing. I didn't have any toothpicks to use as applicators for this, so I just cut a q-tip and used that. It's better than either trying to apply the glue directly from the bottle, or driving to the shop just for toothpicks. The part glues into the frame like so. It wasn't explicitly stated in the instructions, but I'm sure the top of this part should sit flush with the top of the frame. It's pretty easy to do this, though if you need to apply pressure, do be careful. I would imagine those thin brake parts being quite easy to break. Next, these apparently they're called W irons. I can see why that might be. I appreciate that these are a single part for each side. It'll make it much easier to have nice even wheels. I think that sort of thing might be important. These are glued on these are glued onto the sides of the frame, which is fairly straightforward. Though you do have to pay attention and make sure that you're lining these up with the top of the frame. I use the work surface to help with this. Buffer beams come next, and this is a simple enough part, which goes onto the ends of the frames. The instructions say to leave this to bond for a while, and I think that's a pretty good idea. So I did that. They also say to install the buffers now. I felt like it was a better idea to do that later, just because I had a pretty strong suspicion that it would be rather easy to knock the buffers out of place, and I didn't really want to do that. Axle boxes come next, and you can see them, so I probably don't need to say that these are small fiddly bits. Oops, I said it anyway. You can see there's some little nubbins next to the W irons, and the ends of the leaf springs should contact those. Obviously you don't want to use so much glue that you fill in the holes for the axles, so be careful of that. Once the glue was dry, I test fit the wheels, though I didn't show it, and they didn't roll very well. So I carved out these wheel recess things a bit more, and that seemed to help quite a lot. I don't know if this means I've done something wrong, but I don't think so. Anyway, the next thing to do is install the footboards. I'm not totally sure these are in the exact correct location, but it looks close enough to me. If you want to be really nitpicky, these parts should have a sort of L shape to them, and if you really wanted, you could probably get some styrene bar shaped that way and use that instead. I'm fine with this. Now it's time for the body. We start with the floor, and onto that I glue the middle wall and door part. I guess you might call it. Obviously we want to make sure that this is at least reasonably close to 90 degrees to the floor. When I test fitted the side part, it had a slight curve to it. I'm sure there are ways to deal with this before gluing the kit together, but I didn't do any of them. Instead, I glue the wall part on a bit at a time, just to try and make it a bit easier to put on. I'm not sure how well you can see it in the video, and to be fair it's not a major bend. When the glue is set at the shorter end, it's easier to apply pressure and hold the parts together at the long end without it just coming apart at the short end. So it's not perfect, but it is together. 
Also, it's probably a good idea to remove any excess glue from the outside surfaces, where big lumps of glue will either be visible or impact the fitting of other parts. I move on and add the, I don't know, is this the forward end? Does a brake van have a forward end? I'm going to say this is usually the front end. I wouldn't know. I failed brake van surgeon school and I'm not proud of it. Anyway, I add this end wall. This part should align nice and straight with the lower edge of the frame. The roof has a slight overhang and that should sit on top of the wall part. It might take a little bit of nudging to get it right, but it's not too hard. Then I attach the other end. Unsurprisingly, this one goes on pretty much the same as the other end, though it is a bit more delicate because of how thin the bars holding the top part are. I did, in fact, have some issues with those breaking, which did make things a little bit more fiddly. And if you look at the finished result, one of those supports is missing. But because the side wall has supports as well, I can live with that. The point is, be careful with those if you don't want them to break, because they will. Next, these two bits form, I believe, sandboxes. I glue them together, and then I glue them into this position here. The instructions aren't explicit here, but I think this is where they go. I put these in at this point because I figured it would be a bit more fiddly to do so after adding the final side part, which I did next. This was easier than the other side because the floor is now significantly straighter. I did have to sand down the centre wall a tiny bit, but that can be avoided if you're a bit more careful when installing said centre wall than I was. And that's the body together. It was a little bit more tricky than the frame, which I was kind of surprised by, but it's not all that difficult. Now, why not glue those two assemblies together? The instructions do say to paint them individually before putting them together, but I obviously wanted a video of the completed brake van now, and not in 35 years time when I get around to painting it. It would certainly be easier to paint them separately, but it's also not going to be especially difficult to paint it while it's all together either. Anyway, it's very simple to glue these assemblies together, though I did find it a bit tricky to apply pressure, mostly because my fingers were almost too big to get inside the body. But I got it done, and the frame and body are together. Hooray! The next thing I did was to put the couplings together, or rather the NEM pockets. Do we call them NEM pockets or NEM pockets? I'm not sure. Whatever you choose to call them, they clip together nice and easy. I'm not sure if I really needed to glue them, but I've done it anyway. Then I add some weight. The instructions suggest plasticine, and I guess blue tack could work as well. It's fairly similar to plasticine, but instead I've used a couple of washers I glued together. I've no idea how much these weigh, but it's not too much. I've clearly not gone to the extreme of trying to represent the actual scale weight or anything like that. The main thing is the weights are relatively centered, so the model won't lean to one side. I also made sure to leave enough space for the glazing, which is included in the kit, but I feel like it's a good idea to leave that out until after painting, otherwise there's no point in having clear glazing. There is still more stuff to add, like this brake wheel. Well, it's more of a handle, but it is still braking related, so, you know. Whatever you call it, it goes in here like so. Easy enough. There are two of these included with the kit, but as best I can figure, you only need one. Then, buffers. I add glue to the holes in the buffer beams, then I just stick the buffers into the holes. You'll probably need to give them a bit of a nudging, just to be sure that they're lined up nice and straight. Nobody wants wibbly wobbly buffers. I glue the coupling pockets into place next, and as you can see, it's rather easy. I figure it's probably not going to hurt anything to have these on before painting time. And then, I form the roof, which is a simple piece of card. I use my knife to kind of roll this to help make the curve smooth, and it seems to have worked. Obviously because I want to install the glazing after painting, and that has to be done from the inside, I've not glued the roof into place, and I've just blue tacked it down. So it's not going to look perfect, but it'll do for now. You get the idea. Then I put the wheels in, which isn't too difficult, but obviously I'm being careful of both the buffers and the side bits that actually hold the wheels in. I would prefer if neither of those got broken. Once the wheels are in, they roll fairly well. I put a coupling on next, and that's easy enough. They just slot into place. I only put on one for testing, I'll have to take them off for painting anyway. On my desk it coupled up with this wagon well enough. 
unfortunately, when I put it on the railway and coupled my locomotive up to it, it wasn't quite so effective. The front coupling on my pannier tank does seem a little bit high anyway, but I had the same issue at the rear. I don't know much about fixing this kind of thing, but my temporary fix for this was putting a small blob of blue tack under the brake van's coupling, forcing it upwards a little bit, and that seemed to work well enough, at least for now. The first train I used my new brake van on was the Christmas coal train, bringing presents and, I guess, Christmas cheer to all the naughty little boys and girls. I think this is a really nice looking little brake van, and I'm kind of surprised at the fact despite the coupling issue, that it works really well. Not because I've assumed the kit would be bad, but because I'm not really what you might call a precise builder, and things like trains do need some sort of precision, so that things line up nice and neat and don't, you know, cause derailments. I would say it's a testament to this kit that it goes together so well and runs so nicely, though I did have to modify it slightly so the wheels would stop rubbing against the frame part, but other than that, it's all nice and straight and it didn't derail. Not even once. I think the detail is pretty good. Being a laser cut wood kit, it's not quite as detailed as a plastic model might be. The footboards for example, but it is still rather good. I did have some trouble finding a Great Western Toad brake van at a reasonable price, and even though I did find it kind of amusing to run trains without a brake van, and getting mansplained about brake vans and how important they are, it is something I wanted a model of, so I got one. I chose this one because it had six wheels and that seemed a bit unusual and interesting. This kit was a good and cost effective way to have a brake van, and a more interesting and unusual one than I would have got otherwise. The kit was also a good test to see if I like these kits or not, and it turns out, I do. So I'll certainly be doing more wagon kits from Osborne's. This will eventually get painted, possibly sooner than later, I do already have some decals for it, but even so, it's probably inadvisable to hold your breath waiting for it. You'll pass out and look foolish. In the meantime, there will be more model railway videos coming, as well as other modelling shenanigans, so be sure to check out some of my other videos. They're probably pretty good. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comments section below. If you haven't already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube for the low low price of zero dollars and zero cents. Or if you have the means and you want to help Herbert Herbert Herb do Herbert Herbert Herb things, as well as seeing my videos a bit early before there's any ads, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon, as well as all my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.